Hello friends. Welcome back to All on Law. Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, a very important topic that's a hyper aldos tyrannism. Guys, uh, in this video, I'm gonna give you a general idea about hyper aldosteronism. So, uh, before uh, starting a discussion on this, I would like to tell you that uh, I made a video before, but the audio quality was not so good. So, uh, I'm gonna make a different video for this with a good audio quality. Okay, so let me give you a basic idea and clear concept about uh, hyper aldosteronism so now the hyper aldosteronism the name itself indicates the aldosterone levels are high right aldosterone levels are high so this is known as a hyper aldosteronism and the, which is the gland that secretes the aldosterone is nothing but adrenals right these are the pair of adrenals located over the kidney adrenals so now we know the hyperaldosteronism is nothing but increase in the aldosterone levels now the two things one is a primary and the second one is a secondary the primary hyperaldosteronism and the secondary hyperaldosteronism before starting a discussion on this I would like to tell you that what are the functions of what are the functions of aldosterone if you know the functions of aldosterone then definitely it will help you to differentiate between the primary hyperaldosteronism and the secondary hyperaldosteronism and from other diseases also so let me start let me give a kick start on this and try to explain you clearly the aldosterone the basic functions of aldosterones are it causes the reabsorption of sodium it causes the reabsorption of the sodium that's very important that you should know and it excretes the potassium okay the potassium ions and the H plus ions the two are excreted okay and the one the sodium is reabsorbed so it's gonna increase the blood levels of the sodium and it's gonna decrease the blood levels of the potassium and H plus so now you know that if the what happens if sodium levels are increased and what happens if K plus or H plus decreases right let's go okay so now we have a primary and the secondary, right? The primary, pri in a primary hyperaldosteronism, the cause is within the adrenals. Means the adrenals are itself, they are causing the increased secretion of aldosterone, right? So the adrenals are the cause. The most common cause for primary aldosteronism is adrenal adenoma, that's the unilateral. Okay, unilateral adrenal adenoma in the 70% of cases. Okay, in a bilateral, it counts for a 25 to 30 percent. So, remember in a USML examination, they will give a history of hyperaldosteronism or primary hyperaldosteronism and they will ask you the treatment plan in a step 3. Okay, and in the step 2 CK, you need to diagnose whether it's a primary or a secondary one. So, okay, so now the secondary in a secondary hyperaldosteronism, the aldosterone levels are rise. Okay, aldosterone levels are more, but the cause is not within the what you call uh, adrenals, the cause is extra adrenal. It's someone who is stimulating, stimulating adrenal to secrete what you call. Aldosterone. There is someone 
who is stimulating adrenals to secrete more aldosterone. I will explain you how it works. Okay, so let me start with this. And okay, so let us take apart the primary how it acts in a primary hyperaldosteronism. Imagine the adrenals are affected. Okay, I'm not good at drawing. This is adrenals. Okay, this is adrenals. These adrenals secretes because of the tumor that's the unilateral adenoma that's the most common cause okay they are secreting aldosterone right this aldosterone what it does it causes absorption of the sodium right that's good that causes absorption of the sodium the blood sodium level increases so blood sodium level increases and this in turn causes intravascular intravascular volume to increase volume to increase okay so when the intravascular volume increases this intravascular volume goes and what it does it goes and affects the juxtaglomerular cells JG juxtaglomerular cells of kidney okay this JG's and secret what you call uh, is the inhibits the secretion of renin and this renin in turn inhibits the secretion of aldosterone so aldosterone and renins are correlated okay so renin stimulates actually it helps in the secretion of aldosterone so when this is inhibited this is inhibited then the aldosterone level the aldosterone is not secreted so this is what happens in the primary hyperaldosteronism okay so let us take on the clear the concept regarding the secondary hyperaldosteronism. The main thing, but the, here, what is the initiating factor? What is the first step? Would be low intravascular volume. Low intravascular volume. When there is a low intravascular volume, it goes and stimulates the kidney to secrete. Let me draw the shape of kidney. To secrete JG cells to secrete renin okay guys so it goes and stimulates renin and the renin levels are increased and this renin level goes and increases the aldosterone levels look at this the aldosterone levels are increased okay the aldosterone levels are increased because of the renin and renin is stimulated because of the low intravascular volume so now this moves and this goes over here and causes sodium retention okay sodium retention okay and this is how the secondary hyperaldosteronism works okay guys so let's move on to the next clear the concept so you're clear with the primary hyperaldosteronism and the secondary hyperaldosteronism right that's good now that we discuss about the clinical features what are the clinical signs or features? Okay, now remember the important things. The patient with the primary hyperaldosteronism, because of the sodium in a primary, because of the sodium, high sodium, he will have the hypertension, right? Hypertension. Okay, that's good. And the prime in the the type of hypertension here will be a diastolic. Remember the diastolic hypertension. Okay. The other features you can see is a low potassium, low potassium, right, and a metabolic acid alkalosis, metabolic alkalosis, metabolic alkalosis because of excretion of H plus ions, and because of this you will get a metabolic alkalosis. So look at the features: the hypertension will be there in a low potassium and the metabolic alkalosis, right, guys? Okay, that's good. And these are the things you see in a, what you call um, in hyperaldosteronism, especially in the case of a primary hyperaldosteronism. Okay. One, the other thing that is the edema is uncommon in a primary what you call primary hyperaldosteronism because of uh, sodium. The sodium is released into the urine because of that you won't get the edema in a primary that's really very important because they will confuse you with the edema feature because we think that primary aldosteronism and then we, uh, we think of um, sodium retention so we get the edema but we don't get the edema okay so let's move on to the next important topic how would you differentiate what are the 
what you call a diagnosis really very important how would you diagnose how would you differentiate whether it's a primary or a secondary or a primary or a secondary can you tell me how would you differentiate so what you need to do is what you have to do just take the urine samples okay urine sample collect the urine sample and check the levels of aldosterone so what happens the aldosterone level will be the aldosterone level if it's high okay if it's high and the plasma renin really very important and the plasma renin levels are low okay so what does it indicate if the plasma renins are low aldosterone level is high in the urine then it confirms the primary primary hyperaldosteronism right so really very important topic i'm gonna catch you guys and the how it is administered you just what you need to do give a high salt diet before the test okay because uh, the salt contains high amount of sodium this should go and shut down the aldosterone level because of the unilateral adenoma it's not able to shut down so the aldosterone level are more even after the giving high salt dose uh, so the pha is confirmed okay the next test would be ct scan of the abdomen right ct abdomen cat scan of the abdomen right that's cool or a cat cat scan of, of adenals you can call if you have an option of over there right so this is how you should differentiate okay and this is really very important in a secondary you will have low levels of renin uh, sorry high levels of renin in secondary you will have high levels of renin remember okay so this is how you need to differentiate and then how do you treat it or then now if this is a primary hyperaldosteronism and the cause is adrenal adenoma cause is adrenal adenoma and the cause is adrenal adenoma go ahead with the surgery surgery is a treatment for this okay surgery is a treatment for this if there's a adrenal bilateral hyperplasia then adrenal bilateral hyperplasia how would you treat that the go ahead with the spinal lactone spinal lactone okay guys so this is how you need to proceed with the treatment this is how you need to what do you call uh, how you should um, approach the patient with a uh, hyperaldosteronism so we got a basic idea that's so uh, how does this uh, aldosterone acts what is the primary aldosteronism hyperaldosteronism and the secondary aldosteronisms right and we came to know how would you differentiate with the diagnosis with the diagnostic test that's check for aldosterone levels in the urine and renin levels really very important are the renin levels and aldosterone because renin levels will help you to differentiate whether it's a primary or the secondary okay guys and the metabolic alkalosis is a very important feature of this hyperaldosteronism because this will help you to rule out other uh, adrenal diseases Okay guys so this is really very cool and the treatment for plan for adrenal adenoma is a surgery and the adrenal bilateral hyperplasia is a spinal lactone i hope you enjoyed this uh, watching this video with us on all on law and we would request you to subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends and please please share our videos and please please subscribe to our channel and thank you so much for watching this video take care Thank you. Okay, guys. Oh, that's a cardiomegaly. Thank you so much. Take care.